Could you please welcome Dave Grohl and Taylor Hall? First, congratulations on another Grammy. Thank you. That's a few now, yeah. <laughs> was that yes. 16 or something? I said 12. 12. Yeah. I should have read. Yeah. But who's counting? I mean, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, no, that's that was. I woke up to that this morning. There's, you know, the time difference, and I kind of woke up and I looked at my phone. I'm like, why do I have 57,000 text messages? And then it's like, congrats, 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 and oh. and uh, you know, we still. We're just happy to still be here, you know? <laughs> like, for us to be able to come back down here and still play big shows and still have fans, that's the reward, you know? So when you hear about things like the Grammys, you're just like, it's just hard to believe that we actually still no, get them, you know? Your yeah, timing's not great. Well, I mean, wouldn't you, would you prefer to be there or you've done that? I'd rather be here, man. Really? <laughs> You know, we've been on tour here for what, like a week and a half? Mm -hmm. And we like spent five days in Byron and we were swimming in the ocean and everybody was like, I wish you were here at the Grammys. It's 20 degrees, like, <laughs> it's like winter there. So this is the right place. Is it a big night though? Do you get messy? Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't take the Grammys to get us messy. <laughs> but yeah, it could be really fun. Yeah. Conquer and Go went number one straight away in Australia in this first week. When you release an album like that, are you, do you still get nervous or do you just put it out there and, and see what happens? Yeah, what do you think? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know, yeah. I mean, you know, you don't really know until it's out there. I mean, you still want to do something that might be able to get on the radio. That's the, that's the... Is that how you measure, how do you measure it? Like I kind of, oh, well, there's that, and then, and then you can really, the real litmus test, litmus test, whatever you say, is um, on stage. Yeah. And you can tell, and he'll, he'll know right away, like, oh, we don't ever need to play that again. Right. Or that one's working. Yeah. yeah. And like, run, I mean, Dave, the first single, run, Dave came over to my house and sh showed me that riff, and I went, oh, that's going to be good. Yeah. yeah. I just knew it, just, just from the riff. So I knew it was good. We knew it was good, and we knew we'd made a, a different record for us. With Greg and a different whole set of colors or whatever, yeah. but you just never know. Well, yeah. one, one you can't those, take it for granted. Mm. One of those colors involves collaborations, and there's a collaboration with Paul McCartney. Now, just for context, Taylor, you're the drummer of this band. Dave, you, you're one of the great rock drummers. You got Paul McCartney in for a collaboration. You gotta get the best if you're gonna. You and know. you put him on drums. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we had to sell some records, man. <laughs> Well, he, you know, Taylor makes albums on his own and has an incredible voice and sings too. So we've had songs where we've we've had songs where uh, Taylor will sing and I'll play drums on before. So there was this one song that we had written that I thought would sound great if Taylor sang it. So he said okay, and I thought well then I'll play drums on it. But Paul was coming into town, and we've been friends for a while. And someone Paul McCartney. Yeah. <laughs> I picked that up. And yeah. so, uh, <laughs> and so, someone suggested maybe ask Paul to play because you know Paul's played drums on a lot of his songs that you don't realize he plays yeah, drums right. on. He's a great drummer, and he has a really specific signature feel that um, that nobody else really gets. And when he sits down at a drum set, you you can hear it. You know, you yeah. hear the drumming from all of his old songs. So um, I called him and asked to see if he wanted to do it. But you got a bit of get a... him to lay down a vocal or something. Like it's Paul McCartney. Well, you know, th I think one of the reasons <laughs> why he Dave's wanted. Because infatuated with him. He gave him around to his house, uh, and mean... when he comes around there, these walls are covered in Beatle memorabilia. It's, it's well, Paul actually, McCartney. we take it down before he comes over. <laughs> Because there's nothing more embarrassing than when a beetle comes over and there's beetles, books everywhere. But no, I mean, he's, uh, I think he, he wanted to do it because it's something he doesn't get asked to do right. often. But he loves to play, you know, so. Was he the better drummer in the Beatles? What's that? Was he the better drummer in the Beatles? I'm not getting in the middle of that. <laughs> don't ask me. I don't know anything about anything. <laughs> you guys have uh, been touring in the country and you made somebody's day recently, a guy called Joey. Uh, who got Joey. up? Joey got up <laughs> Joey. and uh, and played Monkey Wrench with you. I think we got a little clip. Oh, oh Joey! Say hi, Joey.
He's, he's, he's done a great job there, but when you when you pull somebody up from the he audience, did, do you even knew them? The, the, I know, he really knew. Yeah, yeah. I mean, well, here's the thing. The best bit. It's a, it's a, well, the best bit is he's, you know, he launches right into it, and then at our show, there are these big stadiums, and so there's this catwalk that goes out, you know, 100 yards. Yeah. Really long. And right as, right as I started singing, he just went straight out <laughs> in the catwalk. Right out into the middle of 50,000 people. And I'm looking at him like, get your ass back here. <laughs> back here now but that's the thing when you call it we've done it happens often that you'll see people in the in the audience and they'll have signs like it's my birthday i want a hug or can i sing on blah 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 and i'm looking at this kid and he's been standing there. the show's three hours long and so he's standing there with this sign for like three hours can i play monkey wrench that's the name of the song can i play monkey wrench and i saw him and i looked right at him and i said do you know the song and it's a crapshoot you know like you yeah. never know yeah. because maybe maybe they have no clue. Maybe they just want to jump up on stage and yeah, go nuts. Yeah, and people have paid the money to see you guys before. I'm not <laughs> showing you. <laughs> and so he swore that he could do it. And then instead of just climbing up on stage, it took him 15 minutes because yeah, he went down the aisle, <laughs> then he went up the side, <laughs> then he went up the thing. Then, then, then. It took so long. And then he got up there and he just smashed it. Well, the great oh, ending amazing. to that story is that uh, Joey's replacing Dave on the rest of the tour. It's going to be amazing. <laughs> and you yeah. never know because we have the same exactly. <laughs> just sort of sense it all, of style. It all works. Uh, we do have to go to a break. Stick around, though, because Dave and Taylor from Fifth Artists will be still with us. Right here. If anyone steps on it. So this guy comes close. Oh, the close call. And then. Like we all do. Now, you were saying before, I know you guys are both dads, and I've heard, Dave, that you used to fly back to shows when you're in America to be there in the morning when your kids woke up, yeah. you know, so they could see Dad. You just said before in the break that you flew home for Australia for one day for Daddy Day at school yeah. for your daughter. I that had, is incredible. It was the, all looked bad. It was, exactly. <laughs> Don't bring it up around the other guys. Uh, no, it was the, every year they have a daddy-daughter dance at, at th their school. And my wife texted me and said, here's the date, put it in your calendar. And I look at it and I'm like, I think this is in the middle of a tour. And it was a day off in between Adelaide and Perth. And we live in Los Angeles. And so I called my manager and I said, I can't do the Perth show because I got to go to this daddy-daughter <laughs> dance. And he said, you've already sold it. It's a stadium. You've already sold 40,000 tickets. <laughs> us look so bad. Uh, well, I, cancel you know, I cancelled out on Daddy Day because I wanted to go on a golf trip. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Oh, you're flying Wait, back to home. Did she appreciate it? Did you she know, it? They'd, not, not at the time. <laughs> but I knew, like, I'm going to hold this over their heads for the rest <laughs> of their life. And so I went and did it, and then I came back, played the show, and then immediately went back home after the show in Perth. And the other day, my daughter says, uh, a couple weeks ago, we were flying to Europe. She goes, how long is that flight? I said, well, it's like 12 hours. And she said, Phew, what's the longest flight you've ever been on? Oh, no. I said, well, actually, <laughs> remember that time? And I told her, she's like, oh, my God, you didn't have to do that. Aww. And then she stopped and she said, actually, yes, you did. <laughs> Wait till she hears you did it in economy, too. <laughs> yeah, right. Always, coach. Yeah, Just, yeah. You know. We love your videos. We saw some of them before. My favorite is Everlong. Um, where you basically, Dave, you get a giant hand all of a sudden. Yes. And you just go around. I think we got a bit of a clip over here. But you just go around and you just fix problems with this giant, giant hand. Yeah, it's hot girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, very, very hot. And uh, where did the idea come from? Just have this giant hand. Hey, this guy. Well, you know what? He had a director. Okay, so it was directed by Michel Gondry. Oh, wow. Okay, so he's, at the time, he was making music videos and he was really considered to be the most brilliant music video director in the world. He did Bjork videos, he did some White Stripes videos and stuff. And so, but then he went on and started making films, like The Eternal Sunshine yeah. and the Spotless Mind oh, and things wow, like that. Yeah. So he is without a doubt one of, I, I, I think he's a genius. I yeah. think he really is, but a mad genius. So this whole idea, the thing with the hand stemmed from when he was young, uh, he would get fevers or, and his hands would swell up and his mother would have to come and and, uh, and massage his hands to, to make the swelling go down. So a lot of that video, it's meant to make fun of um, like the Evil, Evil Dead, Dead movie. Yeah. But 
the way he explained it, a lot of it had to do with some like his childhood trauma or something. I've never had a fever like that. I haven't either. <laughs> isn't that, that's also uncomfortably it's numb, pink, isn't it? It's that Pink Floyd yes. song. It's it like, is, yeah. My hands swelled up like two balloons. I'm like, I've never had that fever. <laughs> and then I remember Not at the it, end of a show, you're like, oh yeah, my god. Hurt, but I've never had him like balloons. Well, in this case, it was just one hand too, so that was even weirder. <laughs> yeah. Tell you what, is it true that you still drive your car that you used to drive at high school? Kinda, yeah. He does. Because you still love it, or nostalgia, or you just can't afford no, you to get another one? No, they, no, I mean, I have another car too, but it's not much better. Um, I don't know. I don't really care about cars that much, but I like my cars. I like trucks. I grew up driving trucks when we were kids. Which we call a ute. Which are amazing, and I want one so bad. <laughs> and they don't have them down there. Yeah. All the trucks now are big and huge. Big, bulky, yeah. built Ford tough, these big old trucks. They used to have these small trucks like utes. Yeah. So I kept my ute, basically. And it's an 86 Toyota, and you can't kill it. <laughs> you just can't kill it. You know? this could... There's no chip in there to like go, like, you know, go wrong. There's no, the doors don't open on their own or any of that kind of stuff. I feel like but... if you like it that much, you could just buy a Toyota at this point. <laughs> One show left in Melbourne tomorrow night if you want to go along. Marathon Goddess is going to be here in the studio with us to tell us more about the motivation behind her goal. Jimmy. Hi, guys. I just met her. Yeah, fantastic. She has some nice titties.